With version 5.1 of 86 Box, we got a really interesting update. It now supports portable mode. This means we can set up all our virtual machines, our games, our configs, and everything will be saved on the portable storage device. So we can just plug it into any computer and off we go. We begin by downloading a few resources. I will put the links down below in the video description. First, we need the 86 Box emulator. And we also need a ROM set. There's one specifically for version 5.1. Here is the download link. This is the storage device I'm gonna use. I've already got a few resources for DOS and Windows ready to go to set up all our virtual machines. I'm using a two terabyte NVMe SSD, which I put in a USB-C enclosure. The SSD was kindly supplied by Orico. Firstly, I will show you how to configure 86 box for portable mode. Then we'll take a closer look at the SSD. It's a sponsored segment. And after that, I will set up a few of my favorite retro PC configurations. I've downloaded 86 box and the ROM set. Let's extract the emulator. Off we go. We extract the ROM set, extract all. There's a subdirectory, so I will put it straight into the root directory of the SSD. And then we rename the ROMs folder. So it just says ROMs without the version number and we drop it into here. And then we can delete these files. We don't need them anymore. By default, 86 box saves the virtual machines in the user folder under 86 box VMs. So we run it and we can see these are the virtual machines. I've changed the names a little bit and it doesn't change the directories. That's why there's a little bit of a mismatch. To make it portable, we need to create an empty 86 box underscore global.config file and put it in the directory of the Windows executable. So I'm gonna select the file name and copy it. And then we'll paste the file here. But before we do that, make sure you go into the options and click on view. And there's one setting here, hide extensions for known file types. This needs to be unchecked. And then we click here with the right mouse button, new text document. And then I'm gonna paste the file name, enter, off we go and if we run the emulator now, no virtual machines found. We are ready to configure the machines to our liking. Orico was kind enough to send me one of their SSDs for this project. I got it for free and I do get to keep it. It is the IG740 Pro, which is a PCI Express 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. I'm using a USB enclosure, well, because we want it to be portable. To benchmark the full performance, I installed it into my mini PC. Here we have a result of Crystal Disk Mark, over seven gigabytes per second for reading and over six gigabytes per second for writing. Understand that this is a budget and value oriented product and therefore this SSD does not have any DRAM. I put it under the microscope. We can see four NAND flash chips by YMTC. I was told that these are TLC NAND modules, but the actual website doesn't mention TLC or QLC, just a generic term 3D NAND. The controller is a MAP 1602A. Inside the box, we get a heatsink, a thermal pad, a screwdriver, and a screw. In terms of pricing, at the time of producing this video, you're looking at 135 USD for the two terabyte version. We might have some discount coupons for you below in the video description if you're interested. And now we're getting to the good stuff. Let's configure a few retro machines and I will keep them on my portable device. Well, for future videos, benchmarking projects and also playing some games every now and then. So we select a new configuration, we get to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this Pentium 2 with 3DFX Voodoo. Next, so we're gonna set up a Windows 98 retro gaming PC. Here we select the machine type. So we scroll down and we go for a slot one 
system. There are lots of motherboards we can choose from. I like to use this one. This is a motherboard I actually have. In terms of the processor, well, it depends how strong your host CPU is. This emulator is very demanding. I get away with a Pentium 2 up to around 300 megahertz, but uh, keep in mind, I have a very powerful mini PC with the latest Intel Core 9 Ultra 285H. If you have something slower, then uh, you might have to lower your expectations a little bit and reduce the frequency. In terms of RAM, let's go for 256 megabytes. Next, we click on display and here we can select our graphics card. With a Pentium 2, a Voodoo 2 is most suitable, but personally I like using a Voodoo 3. It's a single card, uh, just need one driver and it's a little bit easier to set up. But I will show you how to configure both options. Let's say you wanna go with Voodoo 2. So we need a video card first for 2D. I like to just go with a PCI video card. Let's pick a Trio 64, this one here. Diamond Stealth, we can click on configure, select the amount of RAM, two megabytes. And then for video number two, we just tick Voodoo 1 or Voodoo 2 graphics, click on configure, then we're choosing 3DFX Voodoo 2. We can max out the frame buffer and there's a tick box here for SLI. Now screen filter is very CPU intense, so I untick this one and if you're struggling with performance, you might also want to untick this option, but it's fine on my computer. And render threads, I've been told to leave that on two to be faster. Press OK, and now the settings are locked in. If you want to use a single Voodoo card, well, untick this box, and then you have a couple of options. You could go with a Voodoo Banshee, or with the card that I like to use, a Voodoo 3, 3000, it's a little bit faster than Voodoo 2 and SLI, and you just have to deal with a single card. Here the configuration button is on the right side. The same uh, information that I mentioned earlier applies, so render threads, leave it at two. Screen filter, untick that one, because it's very demanding, and depending on your CPU, you can toggle the setting to see what the performance is like. Next up is input devices. AT keyboard, let's change that to PS2. Mouse, we also have a PS2 mouse. Click on configure and change this to wheel. Sound is next. There are many options, especially under MS-DOS. All sorts of sound cards are emulated. We are gonna stick to a Windows machine. I'm just gonna go with the PCI Sound Blaster 128. The setting for network and ports, I don't change anything here. Storage controllers, this is important. So for the floppy controller, we change it to internal device because the motherboard has uh, floppy uh, ports on the motherboard. We skip the CD-ROM controller. This is if you want to emulate the Panasonic MKE device specifically. Go here under hard disk controller and change this to internal device. The motherboard has uh, two ID ports, primary and secondary. Configuring the hard disk, this is probably the most complex aspect. We get this menu here, where we're creating a virtual hard disk file. So click on specify, and then I'm gonna go into virtual machines. We can already see our subdirectory here. And I'm just gonna call this 40 gigabyte ID uh, hard drive. There you go. Press save. Then we click here for the size. It's in megabytes, so let's go with 40,000. That's it. In terms of speed, you can leave it on RAM disk very fast, but I like it slow down a little bit. Uh, 7,200 RPM. And everything else, leave it blank. I'll leave it by default. You can also change the ID channel. This one will be primary. Press OK. Remember to partition and format. OK. And there it is. We can move on to the next section, which is configuring floppy and optical disk drive. So the first one here, we change that to a 3.5 inch 1.4 megabytes. And this one I'm going to disable. 
machines of this class that just had a single floppy drive. And then I want an optical disk drive. We're going to use an Atapi ID drive. Let's max it out. 72x speed. And this one, you can see the primary uh, devices, uh, the, the master device on the primary port is grayed out. So it will be on the primary channel as the slave device, but we can change it here and connect it to the secondary ID channel as a master device. And that's it. We are done. Press OK and our machine is ready to go. Let's fire up the emulator and see what's happening. Here we can see the screen and we can click in here, press delete and we get the BIOS just like on the real machine. Now a couple of shortcuts, control alt and page up will toggle full screen. There you go. Let's do it again to go back to window mode and then it is control and I believe to release the mouse cursor. So let's go back to full screen and here we can configure our BIOS. Let's go load the BIOS defaults. We now need to install Windows. So we need to insert the Windows installation disk. There are some icons down here for the floppy, the hard drive and the optical disk drive. Click on image and then I've got some resources here. Windows have a look where did I put it here we go Windows 98 quick install stock version go back to the emulator let's make sure the boot order is like this first it's booting from the optical drive and then from the hard drive that's it press F10 to save the settings here we go we can see the Pentium 2 300 the RAM press a key here to boot from the optical disk drive here we are in the Windows 98 quick install menu. Again, I'll put a link down below for the resources. So here we have the 40 gigabyte hard drive. So we need to create a new partition, select new, enter primary, make it bootable. And then we select the right option and we're done. It's so fast. Press okay here, finished, install, Select the partition. Yes, here all the default options are perfectly fine. It's gonna format the partition, make it bootable and copy all the files across. A really fast process compared to if you use the stock Windows 98 uh, installation CD. And now it needs a reboot. Let me just release the mouse cursor and we're gonna uh, eject the disk image. Now this is a little bug I've noticed. The method of rebooting doesn't seem to work so we can just manually restart our machine by clicking on this button here at the top. It's setting up plug and play devices. That shouldn't take too long. Some other interesting controls here at the bottom. We can mute the speaker or change the gain and we have some hard drive activity LEDs over here. And this is a really nice addition. It shows you the screen refresh rate. I'm using a 120 hertz monitor and yeah, the virtual machine picks it up. So that's very nifty. Let's select time zone. I'm just gonna go with the default and here we go. Now we just need some drivers. To get files into the virtual machine, I'm gonna shut down the machine and we're gonna mount the virtual drive image. So we go into the virtual machines directory, Pentium 2 with 3DFX Voodoo. Here's the hard drive. And on my machine, I just have to double click. If this doesn't work, you might have to go through disk management and mount the virtual disk image there. I'm going to create a subdirectory. Let's just call it drivers. We need some drivers into this directory. So let's back out, go back to the portable drive. And I spent some time assembling some resources. I'm just going to copy everything that's in here. I don't need the ISO. So let's go copy, go back out. We go into here, drivers and paste it in there. That's all done. We go back out. We right click on the drive and say eject. We go back into our virtual machine and fire it up. 
If you want the mouse to be smoother and you have a decent computer, click on action and make sure you tick this box here, update mouse every CPU frame. They really did a good job. It is noticeably smoother. Here we go, there's one tweak we need to do, which is setting the DMA mode for the hard drive. Click this, tick this box, press OK, and another reboot. Graphics drivers are next. So we go to the C drive, into drivers. Let's have a look, Voodoo 3, there we go. And we run the setup program. And another reboot. I also like to install the overclock utility, not for overclocking, but it will give us some options to toggle VSync. For benchmarking, you wanna have VSync disabled, but for gaming, I like using VSync, especially at 120 Hertz. It's very nice and it gets rid of that screen tearing. Next is the driver for the sound card. Looks like I forgot to copy the audio files. Well, not a problem the magic of video editing. So let's install the drivers for our sound card. And another reboot. Sometimes the volume icon disappears. You can just tick it here in the multimedia properties. Click on advanced properties, performance, and the sample rate conversion quality, change that to best. And now we're just gonna uh, tweak the mix a little bit. I like to raise some of these volumes a little bit, not too much to make sure we have a strong signal. On a real machine, I would mute the inputs, but here everything is uh, emulated digitally, so we don't need to bother with that. We need direct X, so let's go to C drivers. I've got a couple of versions here. I'm gonna go with version seven for a Voodoo card. This works best. And finally, time to run 3 Mark 99 Max. It's usually my first benchmark that I run. So for this one, let's make sure we turn off VSync to get the maximum performance. Here we go, new 3D benchmark. I like to change these options because only the first two benchmarks are relevant to get a score. Off we go, the famous 3D Mark 99 Max. We'll be back and have a look at the final score. Here we go, just under 3000 3D Marks. Not a bad result. Let me switch the VSync back on. And that's it. Let me shut down ma the machine and we can finish up this video. If you want to create more virtual machines, just click on File new machines and they will pile up on this list on the left side. And that's pretty much it. It's very handy. I will configure a bunch of machines, put it on the portable drive and then I can use it for benchmarking because I review mini PCs as well on the channel and I want to do some benchmarking with 86 box and see how the latest and greatest processors from Intel and AMD compare with these emulator. So there you go guys. I hope you found this video interesting. I do all the I will put all the resources in the video description for you to follow along easily and as always if you have any questions uh, don't be shy. Leave a comment down below and if you're also interested in 86 box I will leave a link to the discord server down below. You can join and we can uh, have a chat there and there are many like-minded people out there that love this emulator. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Oracle for working with us and sending out this SSD. And that's it. I shall see you very soon with another one.